Hey GED students, I need to make a correction video. <laughs> so if you're watching this, um, this is a correction on one of the examples from the Real Order of Operations video where I made a dumb mistake. But whether you watched that video or not, you can still benefit from this. So just a clarification, this particular problem is asking us to simplify an expression. Um, just meaning that I've got some numbers here some operations that tell us what to do with those numbers, like this minus tells us to subtract. Um, and we can see that like this two is shoved up against this nine with only parentheses between them, or I should say that entire grouping, not just the nine, uh, with only parentheses between them. So there's some multiplication here. So numbers, operations for me to perform, that's what I mean when I say simplifying expressions. And um, obviously by the title, we're gonna use the order of operations, but why? Some students think like the order of operations is something I just occasionally use when I'm doing an order of operations problem. Uh, but no, the reason why I'm busting out the order of operations here is because I have an expression, an expression with more than one operation. There's more than one thing to do here. And so I need to rely on the order of operations, when to do what in math class. Okay, I will remind you guys, I don't like to use the acronym uh, PEMDAS that a lot of student teachers use. I use GEMMA, uh, meaning that we will start our first step to the order of operations is the groupings, anything inside of a grouping. Now, yeah, that counts parentheses, but there's lots of other ways to group. And we see that in this problem, we have both parentheses and brackets in this particular problem, but those certainly aren't the only ways to group. After that, we'll handle any exponents. Of course, those include both the little floating powers and their inverses, the radicals such as square roots. So exponents. After that, we'll look at any uh, multiplication and its inverse division. Uh, an operation's inverse is always part of the same step. So multiplication, uh, I always put multiply instead of multiplication. I think this is the second video in a row that I did that, but you do it right in your notes, multiplication and its inverse. All right, and then finally my A that I put for in Gemma is addition and its inverse, which is of course subtraction. And I only use the one letter A or the one letter M and put it together in the same line because they're not two different steps. It's not addition and subtraction. I mean, it's not addition and then subtraction. It's addition and subtraction in the same step. All right, so this is a complex example. This is in fact probably more complex than something you'll see on the GED on the non-calculator section. However, it's really good example for practicing your lovely secretarial skills here as we work with these order of operations examples. You have got to be neat and you have got to be clean or you will lose symbols. And so I like it for that purpose, just for the, really the practice aspect of it. So let's start with where do I start? Remember we said we were going to go to groupings, but tricky thing here is there's two sets of groupings. I have a bunch of stuff inside of a parentheses, but I also have in that parentheses a set of brackets with something inside of that. So a lot of students would go, well, where do I start? And remember when you're doing groupings, we're talking about insides. We're prioritizing insides. And so the group that we should prioritize is the innermost grouping. The innermost grouping is right here. Six plus one is grouped inside of brackets. And so that is the group we should start with. And so basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make this whole expression a little simpler by replacing six plus one with a simpler version of that. Six plus one is the same as seven. So I can replace it with that. And now be really, really neat. This is what I'm talking about, your secretarial skills. Each line of a simplified expression should be exactly equivalent to the one before. So please don't drop any symbols, meaning, I mean, don't lose anything, okay? Don't be that lazy student who just doesn't want to rewrite the problem every time and then because of their poor secretarial skills gets a wrong answer. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down everything I haven't used up. Now, the only thing these brackets were being used for was to form this group. There's nothing shoved outside in front of them saying that there's multiplying. And so I'm done with these brackets because I dealt with the grouping. So I'm going to drop those as well. But now I'm going to keep every symbol from before that I haven't used. The minus, the nine, the parentheses, the two, the minus, the 15. Guys, don't lose anything, okay? Each line completely equivalent to the one before. That's how you avoid errors. And now we can see that our the grouping inside the parentheses got a lot simpler, so it's easy to tell what to do now. Now I'm gonna take this grouping and replace it with a simpler version of that. Nine minus seven is equivalent to two, and that's a lot simpler. I did the operation. Now, this time I can't drop the parentheses. Last time I was able to just drop brackets because they'd served their purpose. But this set of parentheses was doing two things. Let's say that again. This set of parentheses was doing two things. It made a grouping, but it also, look, the, it's the only thing between two and all this jazz, meaning it was also telling us to multiply. And so I'm not going to lose them yet because I haven't yet done the multiplication implied here with that two outside of the parentheses. So I'll keep my parentheses. I'll keep my two from above, my minus, and my 15 above. And then I see that this third line is exactly equivalent to the one before it. Practice, practice, practice this skill. Okay. Now what to do next? There's only two operations left. Okay. We finished dealing with the groupings and that's one of the reasons I like to use a G and not a P because a lot of students would be like, I have to do parentheses next. No. <laughs> groupings are first. So we did that. The next thing we're supposed to do is any exponents. Well, I don't see any floating numbers or any radicals. So there's none of that. So ignore that. And now it's time to do multiplication and it's inverse uh, division. And I do see an act of multiplication. No division in this particular problem, but there is multiplication. There it is, two times two. So I'll go ahead and do replace the two times two with a simpler version, that's four. And again, I'm a very, very good um, algebra transcriber, a good secretary. So I'll keep the minus sign I haven't used and I'll keep the 14, or I'm sorry, the 15 I haven't used. And then now, Finally, after, I don't know, oh, four years, I'll finally correct the fact that I know what 15 minus four is. It's not nine. It is 11. <laughs> yeah. My single most commented on video because everyone's like, um, don't you know what 15 minus four is? So yeah, thank you. It is 11. And this is the final answer. And what you're going to notice is that Mathematicians read down, okay? My final answer should be down there at the bottom. I don't need you to come back up here to the side now up at the top line. That's not where a mathematician is gonna look for his conclusion. I'm gonna look right down here on the bottom. This is my final simplified version of this expression. It's completely equivalent to the first line, but it's completely simplified. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, or dear goodness, if you find another error in one of my videos, <laughs> drop it in the comments um, so I can clear it up and not confuse anybody, or I can um, answer your questions, and um, we can all succeed in our goals here. All right, happy learning.